What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Funboxing with Will. I'm your host, Will, with H2O Co. Film and Photo, and today we're going to be discussing whether or not in a world full of iPhone 13s and Samsung Galaxy S21s, if the mirrorless and DSLR market is something that we still need in today's world. So let's get into this video. Alrighty guys, and we're back. So like I said, uh, today we're going to be discussing DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and whether or not they still hold a place in today's world with the advent and the improvement of the modern cell phone camera. Uh, before we get into this comparison, I just wanted to say thank you to all of my subscribers and anyone who's just stopped by real quick to check out this video. If you find anything informative or infor uh, informational at all, informative or informational, if you find any of this information useful, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notifications to get future videos and content. We put out a lot of tech reviews, um, EDC reviews, camera tech, a lot of overviews, tutorials, and just we go over a lot of stuff here. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, come check us out. We've got a ton of videos and we're going to keep pushing out content. So like I said, getting into today's video, uh, we want to discuss whether or not it, it's no secret that in today's world it's getting to the point to where people have recently even shot feature films on smartphones. And it's really neat to see the cell phone market not just emphasize the cameras in their phones, but try to give the consumer the ability to become creators with their cell phones. And they're starting to veer in a different direction now. Um, never before has filmmaking been so easily accessible to the average person. And I love seeing these new technologies being incorporated into smartphones for creators specifically. Um, the Samsung Galaxy S21 is one of the best cameras on the market in any cell phone. Um, it's comparable to the iPhone 13, and it's got some features that even the iPhone 13 doesn't have as far as this phone can shoot in 8K. And I do believe other than the Huawei, this is the only phone on the market that can shoot in 8K. Whether that's a gimmick or not is yet to be seen but it has the capability. So that is an amazing feature. If somebody was to come to you and tell you 10 years ago that your cell phone could shoot in 8K, you would be laughed at. That's just not something people thought was possible, and it is nowadays. So for those of you who don't know how cameras work, every camera has a sensor in it. The sensor, depending on size, the size of the sensor can depend on how much light gets in. The more light that gets in, the better quality image. So generally, the bigger the sensor, the better image you receive. Um, in a smartphone, you're going to see a very small sensor as the devices themselves are small. They have gotten bigger over time, but still to this day, 2021, you're still going to see pretty small size sensors in even the most advanced smartphones, as in this example here. As a, compared to a camera's sensor, which could go anywhere from a crop sensor all the way up to full frame, all the way up to um, medium format cameras, which have a lot larger of a sensor than even a full frame. So I wanted to compare certain categories with the phone and the cameras, and I own three separate cameras. I own a T8i, I own a EOS M50, and an EOS R. The middle camera in between those three was the T8i. It's kind of dead center in the middle as far as capabilities go. It's not too high end and it's not too low end that I figured it would be good to compare with the S21. I didn't want to completely crush the S21 by throwing my Canon EOS R up there and comparing it to that. So the categories that I chose were video quality, video capability. And these are the first categories. And then secondly, photo capability and photo quality. So I took some examples here that I wanted to show you. Um, I was really impressed with the 8K video. I do kind of feel like it's a little bit of a gimmick as when you zoom in with the 8K, you lose a lot of resolution and the picture image gets a lot softer on the S21 Ultra. And here's an example of that right here. Um, I basically took my son out and 
threw him on the balcony in some natural light and just took a little short clip of him where I zoomed in on his face to see some of his facial, facial features. And then um, I did notice that in the 8K resolution, it's very soft when you zoom in there. The video capabilities go far beyond that though um, with something called Space Zoom that the phone offers. And it's pretty incredible that something so small can act in such a, a way. It, it's almost like having a pair of binoculars with you and your camera. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some video of this space zoom right here. Now this is a video I took. I have an industrial parkway behind my uh, apartment complex and from my balcony I can pretty much see this crane operating station here. And I was just following this guy around with his uh, cherry picker, not cherry picker, forklift. I was following him around with the forklift and as you can see once you zoom in it is an incredible zoom that you get there um but the image quality definitely does degrade as with the photos when you get that close zoomed in um here's some examples of the ultra wide lens going down to a 20 times zoom a 40 times zoom and all the way to a hundred times zoom and as you can see, the image quality really does break down. Um, the image quality gets really distorted, really fuzzy, really noisy when you're at that kind of a, a focal length. But just the fact that the camera can zoom in that far to take a photo or a video is mind boggling. It, it, cell phones have come so far. It's, it's super impressive. Um, also, something that I think, the, the one category where I think the cell phone kind of outshines the T8i is in night mode. Uh, the, the new software that they offer, it, it does amazing things with dark situations. So I'm gonna show you two photos. The first photo is of the T8i, and as you can see, I put this camera in automatic mode because I didn't wanna cheat by throwing up the ISO and dropping the shutter speed and all that. This is just automatic mode, what the camera thought it should be set at, at a night scene. And as you can see, the edges of the vehicles are very blurry. It's hard to make out certain things. And the scene looks very dark, as opposed to the same exact shot taken with the S21. You can tell the difference in the lighting. It almost appears to have more light in the image. Everything is a lot more crisp and sharp until you zoom in and then you start to see that de degradation and the breakdown of the image. And it's just something that I feel would be amazing to import that kind of a software to help boost the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras capabilities. Um, why not add that to an open aperture 1.4 lens. I'm sure you'd be able to get some amazing low light images that way. Uh, it's just that the, the software in the cameras aren't quite there yet. Um, now, comparing the, the low light, we can go from that to selfies and see that software in action again. Here is that software completely imitating bokeh or background blur in a shallow depth of field in a selfie. But for me, it's just, too artificial looking. It looks almost photoshopped. And not only that, but you can see in this photo, the skin, the textures just aren't there. It's a very soft skin. And that, and that's awesome for portraits if that's all you take. But as a photographer, you want the ability to change that. You want that detail to be there. And if you decide that you want the skin softer, you want to be able to go and change that in post. With the software from the Samsung Galaxy S21, it kind of already does that for you. So there's no way to go in and change the level of detail you get. It just gives you what it gives you and that's what you have to work with. So that's another reason that I think people would prefer an interchangeable lens camera is to be able to have that option and flexibility to choose what you want to do with your image. So we went over video quality and video capability with the smartphone. The T8i is more dependent on lenses. Now I can have a 24 millimeter wide angle lens that's a prime or I could have a telephoto zoom lens that's an 800 millimeter lens and the image quality isn't going to change between those two lenses. The image quality when I zoom in on an image isn't going to degrade because I'm actually using optics. I'm using a lens that I paid for and put on the front of the camera whereas with the lens in a cell phone it is what it is and when you zoom in you're going to get that degradation. I noticed that in the same with video in standard light like inside of a house. Here is a clip that I took of a drill in my living room, or again, in my kitchen. 
And as you can see, when you zoom in on the drill, the, the noise pops out. You can see the artifacts and the pixelization in it. Whereas opposed with the T8i, you don't get as much of that. Now, if I was to use studio lighting in my kitchen to light this drill properly, you wouldn't have any of that with the T8i as opposed to the 21 Ultra that you're always gonna get that artifact even if you're using studio light. Um, another thing is slow motion. Uh, the, the T8i that I have and the EOS R that I have, they both shoot 60 frames a second and they shoot, uh, I believe, 1080 60 frames a second, and then they shoot 720, uh, 120 frames a second. I don't really think that the 720 is worth using, so the the clip that I put in here is of 60 frames a second that I dropped down to 24 frames a second in post. And as you can see, there's a lot of motion blur with it. You get a lot of motion blur because you can only shoot at that 60 frames a second and there's gaps in between what's going on in the footage. So it creates a lot of motion blur as opposed to the footage with the cell phone. The cell phone can shoot 1080, 120 frames a second, or it can shoot super slow-mo, which is 960 frames a second in 720. But again, that 720 video quality is just so grainy and so, Eh, to begin with that I don't think I could ever use it in anything. It's a nice feature to have. It looks pretty cool, but it's not something that you can use in any actual video project work or anything like that as the quality is not good enough. So I didn't even bother to test it. But as you can see in the footage of the smartphone slow motion, because it shoots in 120 frames a second, you get a much crispier, less motion blurred video with that action in slow motion. Now the downside to that is because of the frame rate that it's shooting at, you're gonna get that flicker constantly if you're in any artificial light. The only way to get rid of that flickering is to take it out into sunlight, natural light, and then you won't see that flickering. So slow-mo and night mode, I would give to the smartphone. Um, but I think that's about it other than as far as quality is concerned. The slow-mo quality, I believe, is a little bit better out of the cell phone and the um, night mode, the photos in night mode are a little bit better in the cell phone than with the uh, Canon T8i, but I can't see any commercial or professional using a cell phone for something more than just a gimmick, something more than just to show people that it can be done. Let's face it, today's world, there is no such thing as a crappy camera. All cameras are pretty good nowadays. So if you're buying a camera strictly to vlog or have a YouTube channel or to do something that's not professional work that you're going to sell to someone. The cell phone is more than capable of doing everything that you need it to. Can I see somebody showing up to a photo shoot for a product or a business at, that needs products shot for their business or a commercial for their website or something like that with a cell phone and getting down to business? Not quite. Not yet. Um, hopefully that will be changing in the future though. Uh, and I, I, I have no doubt that it will with the leaps and bounds that we've been making recently in the technology. Um, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. But for now, over here at H2O Co Film and Photo, we're gonna keep with our DSLRs and mirrorless cameras just for the time being. Um, I can't wait to see what comes next with Samsung and iPhones and to see where their tech goes. If this is where they're at already, it's gonna be amazing to see what they do, especially now that they're considering the creator into these cell phones when they make them. So, uh, like I said, it was just gonna be a quick comparison video today. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you guys have a great night. Uh, stay safe, and above all, stay creative, my friends. We need more of that in this world. Have a great night.